Hey, I'm here with the Framework desktop. You might know Framework from its laptops. This is their first desktop. The laptops use modular uh, parts and repairable DIY swappable parts, so you don't have to throw the whole laptop away if you need to fix your drive, your keyboard, even the screen. Um, they're bringing that expertise to the desktop space. I know you might be thinking, desktops are already modular. That's how people use them. Repair parts, swap parts in and out, upgrade, customize over the years. That doesn't mean that Framework doesn't have anything to bring to the desktop space, though, including a lot of customization when you order the system. So let's get into it. Framework is leading out with the DIY edition of this system. They have that option for their laptops, which means you do some assembly rather than ordering it all together already. Uh, the DIY version is the only version of this for now, which means some light assembly is required. Don't worry, unless you're a complete and total newcomer, maybe that's intimidating, but otherwise, I think I can believe that most people can handle it. Their guides are very good, it takes 20 to 30 minutes, step-by-step -step process. Um, it's really easy to follow and it really doesn't require that much building. A lot of it came together already. Uh, you pick really what CPU base you want, and then that comes installed in the main board, which is already in this assembled tower. All you really have to do is pull off the top panel, install the CPU fan, and install the storage drive. A little finicky, maybe a little intimidating if you're a total newcomer, but I do believe that most people can accomplish this. The interesting thing Framework does with both the laptops and the desktop is you can order this closer to a bare bones kit. You'll still get some of the parts included. You have to pick your processor base. Um, there's three tiers of processor options. But other than that, you can stop there and just bring your own storage, bring your own CPU fan, even your own power record and of course your own operating system if you're a Linux user uh, into the equation and not really order any of the parts from framework itself. Price wise if you just want the bare bones kit starting at 1099 you pick the base level processor there are three tiers of AMD processing which we'll get into because that's also a big draw of the system um, but we got the high-end model sent to us and a little bit of assembly was required but they did send me the CPU fan they sent me a drive all that's factored into our review configuration cost but you can choose to do that with none of it you can if you already have a Windows license bring that to the party if you can get one from somewhere cheap you can use that or you can just install Linux and not pay for it at all. Um, but the option that we were sent was sort of a configured, ready, and high-end version, which I'll get into those specs in a moment. Aside from all that core component stuff, and again, really all I did was install a CPU fan and a drive, the aesthetic options are actually one of the most customizable and enjoyable uh, aspects of this. Um, these front aesthetic tiles, it doesn't come with all of these. You can order a slew of packs of different colors or these individual one-off um, graphic tiles like the, the Linux logo, uh, the heart. There's a range of things to pick from, which really goes a long way in sort of personal personalizing your system and making it kind of fun, or you can keep it black and plain. This front panel pops out and you can just kind of swap these tiles pretty easily. Um, one of the other fun customization things is the side panel, an optional order, not a huge deal, and there's not a ton to look at in there to be frank. It's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, minimalist system in there, not fun RGB lighting or anything, but a clear panel, usually a bit more fun than a solid black panel. So if that appeals to you, um, that's something you can add to add a little bit of uh, personality and some more fun to this system than an all black professional looking uh, machine. And finally, the last thing is you can put an, a handle on the top as well. Um, makes it easy to carry, which really goes a long way in enjoying this thing because I love how small it is. It really surprised me. It's a mini ITX form factor, so I knew it would be small, but when I first opened it out of the box, it's, it's so, uh, it's adorable, honestly. It's handheld, it's, you can lift it in one hand. Um, you don't take a desktop with you that often, obviously, but it's nice to have the option. And one more aspect of customization, it kind of goes hand in hand with ordering these individual tiles, but it's much more functional, are these expansion cards. What's Framework uh, sort of pioneered on their laptops, you flip the switch on the bottom and you can actually remove these ports. Uh, these little cards come with USB-C inward facing connections, so it connects to the system, but on the outside, you can order you know, HDMI, USB-A, USB-C, whatever you find most useful, and swap them in and out as needed, or just order a set that you know are gonna stay in there most of the time. That gives you a lot more versatility. Um, the desktops, you know, compared to laptops, laptops do have more ports in the in general, so you don't maybe need them as much, but the front facing ports are just always more accessible. So whatever you think is most useful up there, you can you can uh, order and add those in and take them out as you need them. I mentioned we were sent a high-end configuration. The AMD Ryzen AI Max series powers this, and it comes in three different tiers. We have the top model, the Max Plus 395, which is very fast processor in its own right, but the real draw is the unified memory feature. This system has 128 gigabytes of system memory, again, great in general for any productivity task, but the really interesting thing is you can use the unified memory towards other workloads. So up to 96 gigabytes of that 128 can be allocated at any time for graphics workloads. So gaming, um, even AI workloads, if you do local inferencing on moderately sized models, you know, there is a limit to the power this has, but uh, you can put that towards graphics workloads and even without a discrete graphics card, 
um, you get a pretty sizable amount of graphics performance. Um, you know, you're never fitting a graphics card in a system this size, and it's way more powerful than integrated graphics, so it's a really neat solution that falls right in the middle of those two power tiers. So I ran this desktop through our usual suite of benchmark tests, but because it's such a unique system, I kind of ran the gamut on the tests I did. Gaming tests, workstation tests, and of course our general productivity tests. Um, comparing it against a traditional desktop, a small form factor gaming desktop, and everything in between, including a Mac Studio, uh, this really held its own. I think compared to something like a high-end Mac Studio, you're going to get more processing power for uh, media editing workloads. It's not quite up to that level, nor can the GPU stand up to a traditional graphics card uh, in a full-size tower. But it did fall nicely in that range um, and above what you'd probably get out of a gaming laptop, depending you know, on the configuration. Um, processing for general productivity was very high. This is a fast processor, even beyond the uh, unified memory or the graphics performance. So general productivity is no sweat despite the size. Media editing to a moderate degree, you can definitely get away with on this system. And as I mentioned, everything but the largest um, AI models and you know, the most onerous tasks uh, can be handled by this system. So if you're looking for one of those personal desktop PCs for AI work uh, locally, this is, you know, a lot of those solutions are from NVIDIA. This AMD model also will kind of do that if you're looking to be an early adopter in that space. I mentioned gaming, not something we'd normally run at all on a system with integrated graphics, but again, this unified memory makes new things possible. Um, you won't get as much performance as you will out of a modern RTX 50 series. Even the high-end 40 series is gonna beat this. Again, there's only so much you can do to defy physics in this small space without a full-size graphics card, but it's definitely a step above integrated graphics. Depending on the title, like Call of Duty, I saw over 100 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, you can play a high fresh multiplayer competitive game on this little box, which really is not common at a system this size. More demanding games, you know, we tested Cyberpunk, especially on high settings. That's uh, maybe a bridge too far, but even low ray tracing or high with uh, high settings with ray tracing off, you can really get pretty solid 60 FPS performance. Um, this box is pretty capable. Obviously, it'll vary greatly game to game, but generally speaking, you can do gaming on this system, much more so than I would ever recommend on an integrated graphics desktop or laptop. So that's what our roughly $2,500 model is capable of. Of course, you're gonna get less, especially gaming performance uh, with the non-Max Plus versions, the lower end AMD chips in this. Still should be good for general processing, but I wouldn't necessarily say run out and get those models and expect to do moderately demanding gaming. Um, this is for DIY heads, people who really like the space saving, people who want to use the customizability, how Linux friendly it is, like you can just order it and not pick a uh, operating system with it and save money that way. Um, tinkerers, you know, it's a really fun system, maybe not the most value per dollar on the performance basis. If you're looking at the high-end models, you can get a gaming desktop really for about the same price with a lot more power. Um, but obviously it has its own thing going for it, and there are way more details in my written review on PCMag.com, including exact benchmarking results, processing, gaming. Check it out, read my full review, and thank you so much for watching.